Good morning, guys. Yeah, W. Absolutely. That's great. It's up 700% from the lows. <laughs> pretty, pretty intense. Right, let's do a quick um, wait, wait. Uh, yeah I mean it's gonna have a down D eventually let's see here. okay let's see here so do we have for today AAL I'm still short capping up a little bit with the markets but it's capping up into a lot of resistance here in the mid high tens so we'll see how it acts there AFL this is a random stock I shorted yesterday I, I was about to cover at the close but I didn't get filled and uh, I didn't see that so <laughs> I'm still short this thing like half size I only got filled on like half or actually two-thirds size and it's capping up over my stop today looks like so that's a little bit annoying DFS capping up right into the declining 50 day ish 50 days like at 50 let's see what 40 50 cent yeah 43 or so is the 50 day today COF same thing capping up into actually a little bit above the declining 50 day we'll see how these things close they close strong I'll kind of cover there's a good chance they're gonna fade the gap today uh, uh, Okta is a long position from yesterday, acting well. Excel bouncing. BCRX is up. They have forward-looking event on. Uh, is it Thursday? May six? No, tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm gonna sell a bunch, no matter what, into the event in case it sucks. Or maybe today. I, I don't know when they're going to release it. If they're going to release it pre-market, I'll have to dig into that. Uh, Mark is a home run trade. I added a little bit more yesterday. I have a little bit over 200,000 shares. I think this thing, you know, if it gets going, there's no reason it can't go to two bucks or something. And Envis is another home run trade gapping up to 160s today. I bought it yesterday, late day. It had enormous volume. I bought it here 98 cents and then I added at 105. I, was, I had 250k shares. Are you loose? I don't know what that means, but no, I'm not in a W. Are you loose on W? I don't know what that means. No, I'm not in it. I covered yesterday when it stopped me out here in 128, 127-ish. Uh, APT tried to perk up yesterday. It's not going away, so we'll see that it has a range here in the high 13s. SM is capping up with the markets. INSG, I don't know, it's just a lot of things capping high. Tilray also has a decent chart capping up above the 50 day, but I don't know. MRNA looks like a high tight flag. OWAS. Mm. SC gapping up looks good. CAPR is gapping lower. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take this one off my watch list. No, I'm not in. Why would I hold a short in earnings? Just doesn't make any sense. Especially a short that didn't go down like, okay if I you know if the stock had gone down to like a hundred bucks maybe I would have held a tiny bit into earnings but no way no way no way this is the reason why you don't hold stuff into earnings especially if you're if if you're short or, or if you're not in, or like 
locked in the money already. This is the reason, because, you know, it's just gambling. And we're not in the gambling business, we're in the trading business. Yeah, maybe it could, but the quote, yeah, I mean, it's up 700% in, in a little bit over a month. I don't know. It could also easily fade here. It's kind of hard to know, obviously. Could easily be a sell the news type of a thing, but we don't know until it happens bunch of biotech news it's just a lot of things moving and these biotech ones are hard this is phase one that's you know relevant they stopped their trial for efficacy um, this is another biotech this one I don't know why it's up ever had earnings this is super thin stock Viven had earnings and CLH had a going concern in an 8k today Scapping down big on that. It's a good chance this thing is going to go bankrupt. I, I'm actively watching for a short setup. Maybe we get it in a few days. This shake looks good. Regan. Yeah, I don't know. There's just so many things. Yeah. WLL, I'm watching this thing. I'm. I really want to get into this thing if it gets going. I think this thing could easily double, maybe even triple from these levels. I want to have 100, 200,000 shares in case it happens. So MV sum down from 250k shares yesterday to 200, no, to 185,000 shares. So I, I sold a bunch in after hours in the 130s, 140s, and I've been selling like 5,000 shares every 10 cents. Um, I'm gonna run out of shares in like like three bucks or so. We'll see. They have a forward-looking event. Not a chase here. The entry was yesterday, late day. Fell them out. I just shorted some W. I'm anticipating the opening range lows a little bit. It's a tight stop. Okay, it, let's see. If it takes out the opening range lows, I, I'm going to add more. I have a small starter. Again, small starter in W. Let's see what it does. Mainly has earnings after hours. I can't hold this thing. Oh, all the alerts are coming in now. Jesus Christ. Okay, I got stopped out of doubling.
this thing wants to go higher. Oh, MDB looks great. Wow, this MDB looks so good. I just bought some MDB. Looks amazing. And they have earnings in a month, so that's a long way off. My God, is there anything not triggering? Jesus Christ. Uh, wait, probably I'm not in it anymore. mRNA had a bad reversal of the highs. This mRNA is one of my favorite setups for a long and, a, and potentially a short uh, because in a tight range it's gonna have a big move either way if it's gonna break out or break down. Oh my god all these gappers. But looks like uh, most things are gapping and crapping so far. Roku looks good, but they have earnings in two days, so gonna be a pass for me. Rig looks good. Okay, let's see here. AAL fading, DFS not fading yet. This melee looks great. It's, it looks like this Peloton yesterday. Oh, but I can't buy them because they have earnings. My God. I would be all over these things. 
Just super annoying. I can't believe this. Uh, just as we start ga getting great setups after this enormous rally, and I can't buy the best ones because they have earnings like the next day. Just super annoying. The market is the most annoying thing ever. It really knows how to fuck with everyone. This is why most people just can't, don't make it. They just can't handle that frustration. This rig looks pretty decent. I know someone mentioned it uh, last week, I think. I haven't met your ex. <laughs> if she's more annoying than the market, I don't want to meet her. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. I'm I'm buying some OAS here on dips. I'm gonna add as it goes higher. But I just l really like the setup on the 60 minute chart. I think this thing could go to a buck 52 bucks. And this WLL2, these things are they do they just look so good on the 60 minute chart. They really do, both of them. I took a starter, tiny, tiny starter in OAS, yes, like 50k shares. My goal is to have like two, three hundred thousand shares eventually.
SC looks good. C. Oh, MDB, I got stopped out. Oh, what a... That's annoying. I got stopped out of MDB. Took a $22,000 loss on it. It looks choppy. It had a great entry point here on the 14th of April. That was a good setup. Right now, it's just you know, it's it's it doesn't look good. Tilray looks like it's going here, man. It reclaimed at 50 day. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, OS looks like I'm gonna get stopped out of the starter. Codex. I 
Oh, this BNTX looks interesting. What's up with that one? Why is this GMPX up? I didn't find any news on it. Is it a Twitter pump? This shake looks great. It really does. Just taking out the year long range. It's been building higher lows for two years. It has a big range here. Okay, W, I shorted some on the opening range lows, apparently. This thing, uh, I don't, I think it's a classic sell the news event. Like, you know, it's for a large cap stock to be up 700% in uh, a month and a half. That's just extreme. I, I think it's a uh, reason for, for, the, for profit taking here. I really do. Yeah, when they gap up uh, over a base, absolutely. Shake is, uh, you know, another example is TDOC, uh, like October last year, similar short. DXCM is another. And Shake is, you know, it looks like those. It really does. I'm thinking about buying it. I also bought some SC, or not some, I bought the full position pretty much. Okay, DFS and COF, I'm thinking I need to get out of these. They're just show, showing too much strength here. Hmm. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for the first candle to form. Oh, thanks for the GMPX news. Thanks. Uh, let's see here. So they... Enters into exclusive... Okay. No, not GNTX. What? GN. GNPX, yeah. I don't know if I have. I don't know if it's good or bad news. Well, it's probably not bad news, I guess.
the volume is pretty crazy on this GN PX. Oh, APT earnings tomorrow. Yeah, Lake earnings were a big letdown. That's why it gapped down. So I'm afraid maybe APT has a similar thing. That they're not as good as they as the market has priced in to be, and then it goes to shit on earnings. I don't know. This ever is having a nice move, but man, this thing on off days, this thing only trades like hundred and like on this day hundred and thirty nine thousand shares. I can't do any size on it. Okay, W is starting to sell off a little bit. I bought some shake. This is gonna be a long term hold. Shag is going to be a long term hold for me. I hope it doesn't pull back. I hope it goes straight up. Because the w best ones are the ones that go straight up without a pullback. Here for your entry, just buy it right here. It just took out the opening range highs. Look at them 5 minute chart, it just took out the opening range highs. Oh well, I guess the opening range highs on the 5 minute chart was 554.80 or so, but you know, look. This thing could go to 200. <clears throat> Potentially, so. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm back in W, yeah. So W, I would love to see one more push towards VWAP to add. This MDB, come on, and now it's back near highs, really? What was that shakeout all about? I'm telling you guys, the market is doing everything to frustrate the shit out of you. Every single day. <laughs> so annoying. I don't know because now I bought a bunch of other stuff. I bought some, I bought uh, Shegg, I bought SC. I don't want to get too heavy, you know, in one day. I don't want to go like increase my long exposure too, you know, too much in one single day. I want to work into the market. So I already have two decent long positions. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, always I got stopped out, took like a thousand dollar loss on it. Had a small starter. And WL I'm probably gonna get stopped out of my starter. Okay, Shag is so far working well. 
I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm I'm risking about um, let's see, my entry is at 56 bucks. Got a little bit of slippage there. My exit is 53 bucks, so three dollar risk to pot possibly make. Hey, why can't this thing go to 100? Right? So three bucks to possibly make what 50 or at least 30, say. I, I like the risk reward, and it's gonna take many months, maybe even quarters, and I'm willing to hold it for a long time. Oh, I need to do a scan. There's just so many. Some days are just AYX. There's a lot of companies reporting over the next two sessions. A lot of them. A lot of my favorite growth stocks are reporting today and tomorrow. Oh, this PDD looks great. Wow, Etsy, holy shit. This is another short that I had. <laughs> wow. These things are straight up. I hate days like this when there's just too many things moving around. It really is annoying. And sometimes there's nothing to do. Pork. Mm, could work, could work. You know, maybe it can test some with gap fill. You know, it's one of these lower priced uh, uh, biotechs. You know, it, it could work. And MDB right back at highs. Oh. PDD is interesting. This Ugas is moving. I was thinking about buying it on yet uh, buying it yesterday. It really looks interesting.
mRNA. Very intriguing. I think if we can go sideways today and either break like break out tomorrow, it could be a huge move. Could go to 70 on the next leg higher. Okay, WLS looks like I got I took a two thousand dollar loss on this teeny tiny starter. Yeah, they're on natural gas. Natural gas triple ETFs. I'm short some NCLH. This thing looks really like if it loses the 20 day, the rising 20 day, I, this is a pretty heavy bankruptcy candidate. So I, I want to be here if, it, if it's going to go bankrupt. I want to have some short.
Oh, Envis keeps going higher. Nice. Putting some more sell orders out there. This is uh, becoming a big, big trade. Close to 200k. What a gift from yesterday. What a fantastic gift. It's a picture perfect setup just after UAVS. Exact same scenario. Forward looking event. Uh, I think they have like a big partnership speculation and you had the tight setup late day yesterday you could get all the shares you wanted you got about a million shares no problem unfortunately I should have bought a million shares but I didn't NET looks oh they also report in a couple of days of course they do of course they do. No, you can't buy anything because they all report in a few days. Great. <clears throat> I'm selling some Okta from yesterday. Just sizing down a little bit. Exactly. It's so annoying. Like, couldn't we get these good setups like last week? Then you could buy them and let them start working. And then you don't have to worry about the earnings. No. They all have to trigger. Now I just hope they all gap down on earnings. Because if they would gap up, well, that would annoy me even more. Exactly, it's the same thing. I've been waiting for a long time, like Peloton, right? Look at this thing. I, you know, the high 32s, you could have bought all you wanted. Now it's gonna, it's probably gonna gap up to 45 on earnings. <laughs> That's the most annoying thing. Oh man, I, I mean, the stock market really is something, man. It really is something. This six, I have to research this thing more. It's a thin name, but this looks like it could be another big year over the next few years. Yeah, that is true. You only need a few good ones per year. That's true. You can't catch them all anyway. But it's still frustrating. Exactly that. Yeah, C H C H G G is uh, really nice looking. I only bought 13k shares. I would have bought like 20. Fuck. Would have bought. I should have bought more. That's fine.
I'm thinking W on opening range lows could be an ad spot at 160, low 168 area. It's getting rejected of VWAP again. And opening range lows is, yeah, one, 168 or so. CREX is fading off. Too bad, I was excited about that one. But one I, I'm really excited about is this mRNA. I think this could be a big one. If it sets up nicely. They also have earnings in a couple of days, of course. But I don't think... They, they don't really have any earnings, so it doesn't matter. They're a biotech company, so... The earnings themselves is not going to matter on that one. Holy shit, GMPX is a monster. Need to watch it for later if it sets up. 180. Yeah, I, I use the 180. Yeah, what's, I don't even know why you get the, where you get the 180 from. Uh, but yeah, the one hour short. That is correct. Did I just do? Oh, I fat fingered. Idiot. Try to put a stop order on W, but I just fat fingered some. <laughs> fat finger. Okay, I just added to W. Let's see if this thing can fade back to the 130s or so.
exactly. Yeah, what I did, I just I, I accidentally covered half uh, on my shares, so I had to reshort them. And I, uh, thankfully, it wasn't too bad. I only lost. I I was able to do it like thirty cents lower, but still, you know, I lost like thirty cents on half size there. That was for no good reason. Oh, and CLH is uh, going lower. Nice. This hurts, is bleeding slowly. I think this car is gonna follow suit soon. It's interesting about this market. There's a bunch of long setups, but there's also a bunch of short setups. Which is, it's hard to get conviction either way. I don't know. Let's see, it looks really good. I think this thing goes to 100. Okay, COF. I'm going to use the highs of the day as my stop now. On the short. DFS, same thing here. Norwegian Dawn Nightmare. So they got into a little bit of a storm. <laughs> Sounds like fun.
Okay, COF and TFS looks like they're fading here a little bit, which is good. I really don't want to get stopped out in this. I think I have good entries and um, I think they, want, they may go lower. Oh, MDB, MDB is about to take out house of the day. Oh man, I don't know. Should I buy it? You know what? I'm gonna pass because one, I already have a bunch in SC and Shag, and two, uh, there's a lot of earnings setting up over the next few days, especially like today after the close and tomorrow and Thursday. It's a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of earnings in the stocks I follow. So there may be setups in those. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. Some of the best movers are the ones that don't have any earnings. Just look at W, up 700% <laughs> in six weeks. Just amazing. Look at Tesla, right? I mean, in this market environment, earnings haven't really mattered that much. But they will matter. Eventually, they will matter. But right now, with all the free money <laughs> being thrown around and, you know, I don't know, low interest rates, etc., etc., I guess, you know, it doesn't matter. Hey, yeah, exactly. This price action is always king. This BA I'm watching closely for a short uh, later this week or next week. It's building a huge bear flag and can't rally. It just can't rally. Like even the airlines rallied, some of them, right? And the cruise lines rallied last week. And BA couldn't rally at all. And it's just building this enormous bear flag. It's just not good price action. I think they may be in big trouble. Oh wow, this LUV. Hmm. Also another airline that looks really, really bad. Yeah, about 25% in Stockholm have already been infected so they have the antibodies so in Stockholm at least in, in, in a few weeks we, we will have herd immunity which means most young and healthy people are, are going to be immune which means you can start lifting restrictions on, on P, uh, uh, and you can also let the older and sicker people out because all the healthy ones or most of them are, have already been infected so the disease won't spread in 
to the sick and old. I think the Sweden, Sweden tactic is the best. Because all these countries that have strict lockdowns, what's going to happen is you know, the virus is going to start spreading because no one is immune. And meanwhile, they have destroyed their economies, locking down. So, yeah, I mean, Sweden gets a lot of shit, like, also from, uh, m like, international media and also within the country. But I think it's the best tactic. It really is. Like, what Sweden did, we have some restrictions, like, you know, like, keep a few meters distance and, you know, no gatherings of more than 50 people. But otherwise, it's pretty, pretty chill. It's not like in many countries where they, you know, pretty much arrest you if you, if you're outside without a reason. But the older people have been restricted, like the nursing homes and stuff like that. Like older and sick people, they recommend those people to stay at home. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> really? Why? Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. They're all gonna die. <laughs> yeah. New Zealand? I don't know anything about the New Zealand tactics. I don't know what what this New Zealand doing. I don't know anything about it. <sighs> this GMPX I'm definitely gonna watch for later. It pulled back into range test Viva, but if it can take out this 430, 440 area later, this thing could rip to six, seven bucks, just like UAVS did, like so many stocks have done lately so I'm definitely keeping an eye on it if I can see a, a tight setup yeah there's no way like China reported what was it one new case uh, I think yesterday and that was a uh, for like an incoming like a Chinese that had been abroad no fucking way. They have 1.3 billion people. They had one case. Yeah. Or one new case. <laughs> My ass. No fucking way. They're, 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 they're just, you can't trust anything out of China. And that all China had fewer cases and fewer deaths than New York City. Bullshit. Any number they report multiply by, by a 10 at least. Yeah, there, there's no way. They're so full of bullshit, man. Anyone who does anything with China, you know, business or anything, you really, ugh. Just a weird country. It's just such a dishonest people. I don't know. Or at least the government. I don't know about the people. I don't know any Chinese. Or maybe a dishonest culture. I don't know. They're lying about everything. <laughs> They're stealing, they're stealing technology, and they lie.
and they threaten like every like especially smaller countries like Taiwan and Sweden and a lot of other countries like you know like they threaten yeah not only not just with the US I think with a lot of Western countries I mean China is not really you know good at making friends let's just say that they have so many conflicts with all their neighbors like South Korea Japan Taiwan and then you have this what is it Southeast Sea what, what, what is that sea that there's a lot of conflict around everyone's claiming it's there since China is building some military here I think Yellow Sea no it's this here Sh South China Sea where China is building these military islands here too they're in conflict with Vietnam with Philippines like like just I mean who are they friends with North Korea Russia maybe I, I mean just a country that's you know, unfriendly with all their neighbors, that's just not a great thing. It's just a weird country. I don't know if it's cold then. I, I just, you know, <laughs> that's what I've uh, been noticing. Then you have a country like Sweden, they're friends with everyone. They're like friends with every every one of their neighbors. Except Russia, maybe. The only country Sweden is rel like relatively close to that's not super friendly with is Russia. But all the other ca countries, like Sweden has great relations with all of these countries. And Belarus, I don't know anything about this country. Maybe not Belarus. It's a dictatorship anyways. Who cares? But like Germany, Denmark, Norway, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, UK, Netherlands. <laughs> exactly. It's because of the chicks. Yeah. So everyone's pretending to be friends. <laughs> In Stockholm. Sweden, Stockholm. Oh, Ugas is taking out house today. Man, I'm so tempted buying this thing. I'm so pissed I didn't buy it yesterday. And I, I, I even wrote a blog post about this trade. So if I'm not gonna buy Ugas now. I'll, maybe I'll buy a little bit later. So Tilray is fading back. Notice a lot of stocks are starting to fade back. We'll see how we close. But BA is going to be a short setup, definitely. And this love looks like death also. Just looks like shit. Uh, I got the three tall chicks. Yeah, exactly. Dude, I'm a nerd. I'm in front of the computer all the time. I don't see any hot chicks. I haven't talked to a girl in uh, six months. <laughs> I'm just playing to World of Warcraft. Well, I don't play World of Warcraft anymore, but... Now I play Total, uh, Rome 2 Total War. I don't see any chicks. I don't know. What, what are these sh hot chicks you're talking about? Sounds like fake news to me. <laughs> Uh, China, a lot of Trump garbage in trade war. I, I think, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a super fan of Trump, but I think his China policy is good. I think he's doing the right thing. I need to, I think the rest of the world needs to wake up to what China really is. 
you know, everyone's been thinking, you know, as the, shine, as the economy grows, they're going to embrace democracy and uh, civil rights and stuff like that. But it's the other way around. Instead, they've been, you know, stealing a lot of technology, buying Western companies on the sheep, uh, built up their own technology, their spy intelligence agencies. Like a lot of, like I read an article that a lot of like PhD students in the Western world from China are actually like uh, technology spies, kind of crazy. Like a lot of them have connection to the uh, People's Liberation Army. And these people have access to like the highest technology in the Western world, in the US and also in Sweden. It's pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, do you think DAL is setting to break? <coughs> I don't know. Uh, DAL, the break, uh, not today, I don't think. But this is something I am watching, absolutely. I, I need to see a range build. <coughs> So I am watching Chi and okay, it actually lost its VWAP. But if we can reclaim VWAP, maybe it's building another higher low here. We'll see. If we can reclaim VWAP and start breaking out of a tight range, just like MVIS yesterday, because it has huge volume, and if it starts perking out of a tight range later, you know that could be a buy. This thing is this thing looks like shit ever. Yeah. This ever looks good, but it's just too thin. Just a little bit too thin. Sakpa, oh man, Sakpa could be a big mover, but you know. There's another one, I don't remember the ticker right now, that stopped the trial for early, and it's up like 100% since it gapped up on the, or 50%, so. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing goes to 20 or something over the next month. Adiva EM2, like I, this is phase one. This one doesn't have as good volume as Akpa. Akpa's really has big volume, six times average volume already. Oh, Shag looks amazing. Wish I'd bought more. And the volume too, look at the volume. It's probably gonna be the biggest volume they ever. It's already a 10 million volume. And the biggest volume day, except the IPO day, is here at 13 million. It's easily going to trade 15 million today, I think. Wow, NCLH. I should have added to it when it took out the lows of the day. I only have 50k shares. I should have added another 20, 30. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna prepare for uh, shutting the stream off soon. So. My game plan on my holdings is this mark, either it stops me out at 54 cents, which is above my entry, my average is about 51 and half cents on my 204,000 shares. Uh, so I, I, either I give back 60k in profits or this thing is gonna double from here. Uh, it, it, it's an interesting theme, thermal cameras, this stunt is trading, I've been mentioning him before. He's been talking about it. Um, it could be interesting. It's, it's, it's a sector play. It's a theme, hype, pump kind of a scenario. Low priced, beaten down. It's, it's a former runner. You know, this thing can really go. Back in 2017, late 2017, it went up 300% pretty fast. So this thing can run and yeah. I like it. 
AAL. Wow. Maybe I'm gonna add to this thing. On the airlines and cruise lines overall, those are my favorite sectors to short. I think there's gonna be at least one or two companies in all of those sectors that, got, that are gonna go bankrupt, where equity will be wiped out. And the primary ones in the airlines sector, I guess maybe AAL, or maybe Love, because that one is the one that has the worst price action. And NCL in the cruise lines. Uh, Excel, I'm just trailing my stop on this thing. Maybe it goes to 40, I don't know. G port, just trailing my stop. BCRX, uh, I al already raised my stop today. They have an event tomorrow. You know what, I may even have raised my stop. But like, when are they gonna release the data? They're gonna, is it pre market or is it during the day? Does anyone know this BCRX? I, I'm probably not gonna hold it overnight unless it goes to like five bucks before they close which I don't think it will I'm probably not gonna hold it overnight I'm gonna raise my stop even more because the price action so far hasn't been great Okta looks good though still just trailing my stop on this one selling some into strength as it goes higher uh, DFS is fading. Okay, the weaker ones are all fading. That's good. COF is still holding up though. What Syphil is doing? SYF. Okay, this one is fading the most. SC has great price action. Fuel cell looks good. W reclaiming a little bit. Let's see if we can get. Uh, if they reject it at VWAP later. Shake looks great at Envis. This thing could still go, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing went to like 253 bucks. Uh, C-Rex, I'm not gonna take this thing off my watch list. It's getting really thin here. And it's not really acting well. Okay, Tilray got rejected all the way back. Taking this one off my watch list. Gee, is another one that's in a big bear flag, acting really, really bad. There's a lot of names. Okay, let's do some watch list cleaning before I log off. This is 6th of April. Oh, Imu is the one. It looks exactly like this. Uh, uh, which one is it? ADVM? No. Akpa. No, wait, wait, wait. Which one? DGTX. Study stopped for efficacy. Looks exactly like Imu back in March or early April. And then it went up another 50% from that gap up there. So if I don't know. Car is already breaking, uh, lows of the day. Okay, thanks, see you tomorrow. Uh, TQQ, CDG.
Yeah, well, I'm not leaving yet. I just said uh, bye to Necron. I'm gonna go through some backwatch lists. Yeah, 6th of April. There were a lot of great entries in a bunch of names. Unfortunately, I didn't buy any, I think. God, NCLH! Wow, this thing is this thing is so toast. Holy shit! Etsy is reporting tomorrow. Hopefully it can hit the 100 bucks and we get a similar setup as W where it potentially, uh, well, well, where the earnings is potentially a sell the news event. This MBRX got halted. This COVID pump. SEC investigates potential false claims regarding COVID-19 treatment. Game over. Game over. 8th of April, this is when Chenmark uh, had a preliminary earnings report and stock almost tripled in a month. Okay, I'll do 9th of April too. No, I'm not. There's 27 items. I'm too lazy. So yeah, this mostly is airline and cruise line related things, and also this uh, CAR. Since Hertz is going bankrupt, there's a good chance maybe these guys will go too. I don't know. This is just something. I'm still like more excited uh, over the short side than on the over the long side. For some reason, because I just see more short setups developing than long setups for now. 
And really only the long setups I see are like biotech and software. And these things are already straight up. So there's not really super great setups in, the, in those sectors. So I don't know. I, I just can't get super duper bullish here when I see so many short setups. That's what's worrying me. Like I've been super bullish many times, like during October, November, December, etc. During uh, late December, January 2018, 2019 through February, March. You know, there, there are times I get super bullish, but, you know, this is not one of these times. I think this is a time to be cautious and be very, very selective. Because we already had a big run, and I, will, I know every time after a big, big run, things get choppy. Oh, MDB is going. I'm, I'm not gonna rebuy it. I, I'm. I'm not going to. SC looks great though. I should have bought more. PDD is intriguing. Hyper growth China name. And this thing already had some fraud uh, fraud stuff, but I don't know how serious it is. This GSX Citron has been claiming fraud in this one. Some big time fraud. They're going to report the 6th, and I think Citron is going to release some new info on it the 7th after the earnings. So this is something I'm watching closely. Because, you know, if the stock doesn't go down on the Citroen stuff, if, the, if it really is like a smoking gun, this thing could have a serious squeeze. Because I think a lot of uh, people and or funds may be short this thing. Especially after what happened to LK, you know. Okay, W... Let's see if this thing can fade here. Or maybe it's not going to. Oh man, if I just knew more about biotech, I would be all over the stuff like this, but I just don't know enough. And I've studied medicine. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm gonna do one more scan. See what we have here. EHGH till. Okay. Looks like the oil names that all uh, gapped up are all fading lower. Yeah. Okay.
more long bio and technology uh, I mean biotech and bio um, technology I don't know there are a lot of good setups in in both of those sectors Biomodity, long sum, and short sum stuff too. Okay guys, I'm gonna cut the stream. There were some pretty good opportunities today, and I think there may be, I, I think uh, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity over the next few days. So there's no need to go crazy in one day. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining and take care.